Aló, Emiliucho. Ciao. Hello. How are you? Good, good. I'm finally good. And you? Finally good, yeah, because you were sick, right? I was a little bit, yes. yes yeah. A little bit. yeah. Yes. Hello, guys. Hello, uh, hello, everybody. For Thank you for joining the episode uh, number 21. 21. 21. Uh, wonderful, huh? Isn't it? I would say that we are uh, approaching, let's say, the first, uh, the end of the first season. Not yet, not yet, <laughs> but we are moving towards the end of the yeah. first season. Yes, yeah, exactly, the first season. Yeah, yeah, like a like a movie series. <laughs> so we have a lot to do, right? We have a lot to do, really a yeah. lot to do. But maybe before doing anything uh, else. Uh, maybe let's show something uh, which we will show it many, many times again and again and again and again. Okay. But uh, let's let's start showing it from today. What? What? Uh, this is a surprise for me. Surprise for you. Yes. It's a surprise for you. Yeah. So if you allow me to share my screen, Sebi. Ciao, Sebi. Ciao, Sebi. Ciao, Sebi. Ciao. So, this is what I wanted to share, my friends. Aha, yes. The yeah. Moscow Bee for everyone. The second online meeting of the International Dermoscopy Society. It will take place online. Yes. 10th to 12th of June 2022. Uh, the registrations are not open yet, but they will be open very, very, very soon in the next, probably in this week. And the, okay. uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, in charge of this Congress as presidents of the Congress are uh, Katerina Longo, the General Secretary of the Society, and Zoe Apala, uh, who is the, uh, the chair of the Scientific Program Committee of the ah. IDF. Wow. So I'm sure that they will um, they will do a great job. I already know from internal information that they prepare a really uh, fascinating and brand new scientific program with a very let's say revolutionary uh, structure. Ah, really? Uh, trying, uh, yeah, trying to minimize you know the monologues and increase as much as possible the uh -huh. interaction and the fun and so on. Uh -huh. So it will be great. And this is just the very first announcement. Uh, many uh, others will follow. So this is what I wanted to share with you at the beginning before we start. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So uh, should we give the question of the week? Of course we should. Yes, Sebi. What about the question of the week? Uh, here we are. So is the question is the following. Are acral nevi more dangerous than other body sites? Of course. Uh, of course, more. They are very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yes, of course. No, sometimes. Yeah. You like sometimes? Uh, you know that I like sometimes very yeah. much. And yeah. in this case? But in this case, no. I don't like Not really. Not really. Huh? Uh, Either yes or no. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No. Sometimes. No. No is the majority. Huh? That's, why I didn't like, that's why I didn't like sometimes in this question. Because yes. this question describes a very common misconception that yes. we are trying to solve. Yes. But still, I mean, uh, we need to try more. Yes, yes. Still uh, 20%. Um, so we have to convince everybody that uh, acral nevi are not dangerous. Well, acral nevi, uh, uh, once we know that they are nevi, if they are melanomas, of course they are dangerous. <laughs> Okay, so this is the topic for today, acral lesions. Emilio, do you like it? Yes, yes, of course you like it. Of course you like it because you contributed with um, a very good uh, a very good paper on this regard. And, um, and uh, it's my task to uh, present you uh, a few, uh, I will share my... No, he was correct. You forgot. He, you forgot uh, uh, to ask from Sebi. This, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Sebi. Can you forgive me? Can you forgive me? 
Yes. Okay. So here we are. Here we are. So I wanted to share with you a few updates on acral, acral lesions. So if you go to PubMed and you type acral endemoscopy, uh, 200 papers appear, meaning that there is a lot out there, right? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work uh, done in this context, in the context of dermoscopy and acral lesions in general. But let's say I want to show you uh, briefly uh, the results of this nice, uh, very recent uh, review paper appearing in the CHAD 2019, early detection of acral melanoma, a review of clinical dermoscopic histopathologic and molecular characteristics, which was published uh, by a group from Korea, Korea. As you know very well, Asian doctors are pretty much um, uh, studying and dealing with acral melanoma because this is the only type of melanoma that uh, it's more or less uh, uh, frequently seen in uh, in Asia. Do you think this is a question for you, Emilio? Do you think that acral melanoma is more frequent in Asian people than in Caucasians? Um, no, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, well, this is not a matter of opinion. This is a matter of epidemiologic data that exactly. we, we, have in, uh, collect, we have investigated. And it appears that there is not a difference in the uh, incidence of acral melanoma, but there is a huge difference in the incidence of non-acral melanoma. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the point. The point is that acral melanoma, in terms of real uh, real frequency, is exactly the same in any kind of uh, po- uh, population type. Okay, uh, because this is not related to the sun exposure. Okay, it's related to other factors, and therefore it it's the frequency is very similar. But since Asian people and African people do not have so much superficial spreading melanoma as we have a lot, then uh, the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, there is this misunderstanding then that uh, acral melanoma is more frequently seen in Asian people. So it's the same. By the way, uh, what they, fi- what they uh, summarized is very nice. Uh, they summarized basically uh, three concepts concerning dermoscopy. First, Parallel reach pattern is the most important dermoscopic criterion to diagnose acral melanoma. We know it. We know it since many, many years. Still, for the job uh, job done by um, Japanese colleagues, uh, Saida, Koga, uh, Tanaka, and so on. And here you see an example of parallel reach pattern. Uh, you know, it's not so difficult to understand what the difference between parallel ridge and parallel furrow. Parallel ridge is a larger bend. It's a larger line, you know, in comparison to the furrow of the skin markings, markings which is very, very tiny. But the, the secret is to look at the periphery of the lesion. Don't look in the center because otherwise it's not, uh, uh, it's not easy to understand. If you look at the periphery here, you see clearly that the, the lines are very thick and also interrupted by the eccrine ducts. Eh? which are, of course, located on the, at the uh, uh, top of the parallel uh, of the ridge uh, of the ridges of the skin markings. OK, so parallel ridge pattern, still the most important criterion. Secondly, uh, something that I want to mention to you, uh, uh, there is, again, as usually, as usually, an intermediate type of lesion, which is called atypical melanosis of the foot. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? This is not all. This is uh, nothing than a, 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 a very initial melanoma that uh, is showing only very subtle histologic criteria. So if you wait, if you don't treat them, sooner or later, these kind of lesions will show the classical criteria of melanoma in situ. So again, there is nothing in between. Uh, a melanoma is a melanoma, okay? This is uh, the, the most important uh, uh, thing that we have to remember in the context of melanocytic lesions. Uh, and I want to share with you a, a very recent case that we had of this kind of uh, uh, subtle 
types of melanomas, which our pathologist was, was not able to call it as a melanoma. Look at the thumb of this um, uh, 65 year old gentleman. There is a large lesion. Unfortunately, the clinical picture is, is a little bit out of focus, but you can see here from the dermoscopy that this is a very large lesion. It's a very uh, 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 um, recent, by the way, lesion. It's not a lesion that the patient is having since childhood. Here, there is, of course, because the I'm saying so because here there is only one po possible differential diagnosis, congenital nevus versus melanoma. But since this is not a congenital nevus, this must be a melanoma, the very early one. So, and you can see that there is a parallel rich pattern. Uh, so it's a, ah, by the way, also, I want to mention something. Uh, parallel rich pattern, it does not mean that the cells are proliferating only under the ridges, but it's a, uh, optical phenomenon uh, uh, for which uh, a, a continuous proliferation of the, of the melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction is seen from the top, uh, from the moscopy <clears throat> as a pigmentation of the ridges, okay? Anyway, uh, we did a, a partial biopsy here and the pathologist was saying uh, melanosis. Huh? And that's why we decided to excise the entire lesion anyhow. Okay, and we will we are waiting for the for the final result. So, second important um, remark of this paper: the three-step algorithm. This is an algorithm algorithm which was published already uh, a few years ago in two thousand seven. And this three-step algorithm is basically uh, uh, is based on three. Uh, uh, three points. First, the presence of parallel ridge pattern. If you have a, a lesion with parallel ridge pattern, you have to, to make a biopsy. Or if you have a lesion which is larger than, se than seven millimeter in diameter without a typical benign pattern, so that's why the three step, you know, so parallel ridge, seven millimeter, no benign pigment pattern. Then if you have a lesion, not showing a parallel ridge, but, but it, uh, being more than seven millimeter without a typical benign pattern, then still we need to make a biopsy. And here, I, will, I would like to hear your opinion, Emilio. This is a 41 year old man. If uh, I, I take a measure of this lesion, it's not really larger than seven millimeter. But do you think that this is a, a, a benign pattern here? Is clearly recognizable, a benign pattern? Definitely not. I mean, this is yeah. a homogeneous pigmentation uh, yeah. interrupted only by the uh, openings of the, uh, of the yeah. eccrine sweat glands. Uh, and uh, also I would say that uh, looking carefully at the periphery of the lesion, I see something that looks at, in the left part, I, I see something that looks like streaks, yes. uh, strangely yes. enough. So yes. overall, uh, I don't like this lesion, yes. if, even if even if I cannot see uh, a, a parallel ridge pattern. Clear, clear, clear. But still, you see, of course, we decided to excise this lesion. Why? Because of the absence of a benign pattern. The lesion was not larger than seven millimeter, but still a quite... Uh, uh, large lesion, and that's why we decided to excise the lesion. So in some way, in um, uh, following the lines of this three-step uh, algorithm, and this pathology uh, turned, out, turned out to be an acral nevus, okay? So it's fine, okay? So it's not a problem, but a lesion like this, in my view, it's a good idea to remove it. And finally, the last uh, remark of this uh, review paper is concerning the BRAF algorithm, which was published by Emilio. Um, the sense of this algorithm is, is the following. Not all melanomas are showing uh, parallel ridge pattern, okay? But this is not, uh, 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 the, the, you know, we still have other criteria in order not to miss this kind of melanoma. And the other criteria, of course, are ir irregular blotches, of course, parallel ridge pattern still it's in the algorithm and asymmetry of structures and asymmetry of colors. Eh? Without, I mean, there are also two negative 
um, features, which are the presence of furrow pattern and fibrillar pattern. Okay, so if you have a lesion with furrow pattern and uh, which count minus one point and irregular blotch, which count one point, then the, the, sum, the sum is zero, and this is not a lesion that it's sufficiently suspicious, okay? But if you have a lesion only showing irregular blotches, this is enough to consider the lesion suspicious. If you have a lesion showing only asymmetry of structures, okay, this is already a suspicious lesion. Or asymmetry of colors, this is already a suspicious lesion, okay? So in some way, with this kind of, uh, of algorithm, we in some way closed the circle of acral lesions, and we definitely are nowadays uh, pretty confident in making the different, a, diff a good differential diagnosis between acral nevi and acral melanoma. Uh, the reason why we should not consider acral nevi uh, more dangerous than other nevi on other body sites is the following, is, is, the, is the, even the opposite. Huh? Because in, uh, 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 let's say, the greatest, greatest majority huh, of melanomas uh, uh, appearing on palms and soles are de novo. They are not forming on a pre-existing melanocytic nevus. Huh? While on the trunk, we have a chance of about 20 to 30% of melanomas to develop on a pre-existing nevus. But in, in the acral location, this chance is much lower than, than in other body sites. So in order to understand how this algorithm works, uh, this is a clear cut benign lesion. Why? Because it's, it's showing a clear cut parallel furrow pattern. There is no asymmetry, there is no, no other things. So this is definitely benign. What do you think about this lesion, Emilio? I like this like pattern. So it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a variation of the parallel furrow pattern. Exactly. Uh, this is called lattice like pattern. It's a variation of the parallel furrow pattern. So where you have not only the furrows like this, but also uh, perpendicular lines designing a kind of network, let's say so. And so if this is clear here, I have no doubts that this is an acral nevus, even though it's heavily pigmented, who cares? Huh? Yeah. Then what kind of pattern is this? this fibrillar. Is fibrillar, fibrillar pattern, the lesion, regular fibrillar pattern. So it's a very regular lesion, no asymmetry of, of anything, no blotches, nothing. So this is again a benign lesion. What about this lesion here, Emilio? Uh, that's an extremely nice example. Uh, uh, because here there is a parallel furrow pattern exactly. in some parts of the lesion, but overall the lesion is asymmetric, ugly, uh, irregular blotch in the right-hand side, asymmetry of colors, asymmetry of structures, so we cannot be fooled by the parallel furrow pattern here. We should... Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So even though you score the parallel furrow pattern minus one, then there is a symmetry of two things. So already two points, which is one and then irregular blotch. So two points in summary. And therefore, this is a highly suspicious lesion, independently from the fact that there is no parallel reach and uh, there is the presence of parallel furrow pattern. And in fact, this was a melanoma in situ. Okay. By the way, and this is the last uh, remark, uh, the, uh, these authors were coming out with a very nice algorithm. You know that I don't like algorithms, but uh, this is uh, uh, very nice because they say, okay, if you see parallel rich pattern, okay, that's enough. You have to make a biopsy. If you don't see a parallel rich pattern and you see and you see a typical benign pattern, so parallel furrow, lattice-like, or fibrillar, then it's a benign lesion. If you don't see it, you have to measure the size of the lesion. And if it's a lesion which is less than seven millimeter, okay, then we can follow up the lesion in some way. You remember the case I showed you before, it's a lesion which was not, set, not really larger than seven millimeters. So here we can also think about doing a, uh, a follow-up, but still this is uh, an individual decision we have to take. But if the lesion is larger than seven millimeter, then we have again to make a biopsy, okay? 
So these are the three major points, parallel reach, typical benign, the size, other malignant features, of course, we have to consider. And then, uh, and then uh, so I like this kind of uh, way of doing, and I think really uh, nowadays we can feel much more confident, eh, Emilio? Definitely, definitely. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, by the way, there is a, a comment by Sheen in the chat saying that the problem with acral melanoma is that it is diagnosed late. Of course, we agree. Uh, partly because people don't look at the soles of their feet. When did you last look at the soles of your feet? Uh, <laughs> you looked at my soul uh, last summer. Yes. And you found uh, the yes. street. Yes, yes. So I, I take care of your soul, but yes. what about the other souls? <laughs> <laughs> uh, another question is, are acral melanomas more aggressive per se or just more aggressive because of late detection, late presentation? Of course, this is the, 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 the largest part of the explanation. So it, it's, uh, it's more, uh, the prognosis is poorer because mainly of late, presenta- late detection. Uh, by the way, uh, there is theoretically a small difference, even if you adjust for breast low thickness, but uh, the difference is very small. The, 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 the large part of the explanation is late uh, detection. Uh, by acral, do you include also the dorsum of the foot? No, we include palmar and plantar. Uh, punch or excisional biopsy? <laughs> uh, this is very important, very important. Very good point. Punch, uh, punch or excisional biopsy for uh, acral uh, melanoma. Well, th- this is really a tough question because uh, here our differential diagnosis is mainly nevus versus melanoma. Mm-hmm. Therefore, partial biopsies are problematic per se. Problematic not in the sense, of course, that they might uh, uh, change the biology of the, of the lesion. No way in the sense that with a small part of the lesion, it will be really tough for the pathologist to conclude, considering that the diagnosis of early acral melanoma is anyhow tough. So if you provide only a small uh, portion of the lesion, it will be really challenging for the pathologist to diagnose it, unless, of course, it's an advanced melanoma. If it's an advanced melanoma, okay, no problem. Otherwise, it would be uh, problematic. So that's why... On the one side, it would be much better to to perform uh, total excisions of the lesion. On the other side, I understand that we are speaking about acral sites. We're speaking about sites in which excisions are not uh, so easy. Therefore, we we try to balance between these two uh, facts. Okay, We try to do complete excisions when, when it's possible. Of course, punch biopsies are definitely indicated in case there is a different differential diagnosis, in case your differential diagnosis is melanoma versus wart, melanoma versus MRH, melanoma versus something else, then definitely punch biopsy. But in the scenario of these small flat pigmented lesions when your differential is melanoma versus nevus, then a punch biopsy might not be informative. I don't know, JP, if you if you want yeah, to add anything I, else to this. I agree completely. I agree completely. Yeah. Uh, I always have some doubts when examining nevi located on the lateral part of the soles because the patterns are not so defined. Very good. Uh, in fact, uh, it, this has been described as the transition zone and the transition pattern, which uh, uh, in fact changes precisely. Uh, on the lateral line uh, and above the lateral line, the lesions follow the patterns of normal skin below the lateral line. uh, They follow the patterns of acral skin. And if the lesion is located precisely on the lateral surface, it might be half and half. So the the upper half different from the lower half, but you're right, Elisa, that's a challenging scenario. Uh, what do you think about the parallel reach pattern in pagetoid dyskeratosis of the palms? What is pagetoid dyskeratosis? It's a kind of um, kind of keratoderma, I suppose, but um, it's very rare. And when it, it occurs, it's an histopathologic diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I... Is the approach for the melanoma located on the fingers of the end? Uh, same, same stuff. 
and dacral melanomas are the only ones that have causative relation with the trauma. Um, I mean, no. also here, there is no, no uh, definite re evidence. The only, definite, uh, the only evidence, but it's very, very small, concerning a link between melanoma and trauma is concerning nail melanoma, but not for the acral. Yeah, of course it's true, Virtue has a point, because it's true that in some studies it has been reported that patients uh, report, not all, of, not all of them of course, but, but the proportion of patients with acral melanoma report, report uh, the history of trauma, uh, but uh, it was never uh, methodologically proven that there is a, any kind of, uh, of uh, clear association between trauma and melanoma induction, uh, melanoma initiation. By the way, JP, uh, I was checking the chat. It's so great to see, I mean, all these messages that we receive from, it's really all over the world. It's all over the world. So just to read yeah. a few countries, UK, Argentina, yeah. Romania, Colombia, Venezuela, yeah. Algeria, Algeria, Croatia, Chile, yeah. um, Denmark. Uh, Brazil, Morocco, uh, Spain, uh, Albania, Armenia, Greece, of course, and Italy, uh, Georgia. So it's it's really it's really it's really very very nice. Yeah, Tunisia, Turkey, Germany. definitely Sweden, Sweden, Kyrgyzstan, Poland. Hey, look at this! Look at this! Uh, Poland, Russia, Russia, Greece, of course, again. So it's it's. It's great, really. It's great. To... Portugal, yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mexico. Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Mexico. also, also. Patras. Patras. Eh? Patras, Canada, Canada. So it's wonderful. It's re really wonderful, really wonderful. Uh, so, uh, do we have a time uh, to? Well, maybe I show just one case or two. Yes, a couple of cases. Uh, one case or, or two. Isaac because... Constantinos are already here. Isaac Constantinos are already here. Uh, what is Shebi? Ah, we go to Niza. Sebi decided that we go Hi. directly to Niza. I, I, I don't disagree. Let's go directly to Niza. And then if we have time, I show uh, yeah. one or two cases. Niza, welcome. welcome. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you, JP. Thank How you. are you? Nisa, how are you? Great. As every Sunday night. <laughs> how are you doing? Thank you. You look wonderful. I prepared two acryl cases for you. Ah, okay. Ah, nice. Good. Yeah. Good. From the dermatoscopy blog, of course, yeah. from the forum. Yeah. Excellent. So the floor is yours. Show us. Show us. Here we are. Okay. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> uh, now, my first case uh, is a 20 year old male and uh, again uh, he is a nephew of my colleague and uh, in the summer holiday uh, they sent me the macro photo of the patient and they said to me that this pigmented lesion appeared one month ago and grew very rapidly and when I first saw the image I thought that it could be a hemorrhage because it was uh, black and when I come back from the holiday, I, I, I give an appointment uh, to the boy. And when he came to the appointment, dermatoscopy was just like this. And what's your opinion, JP and Emilio? It's not an hemorrhage. <laughs> it's not an hemorrhage, yeah. It's not an hemorrhage. But I can see, I can see still that there is a parallel furrow on, uh, on, the, on the right side. But the, the uh, lesion is definitely following, I mean, yes, uh, the, exactly, you know, exactly. the direction of the pharaohs. These of this kind case. of lesions usually are congenital. And yeah, not yeah. This congenital, case. yeah. It, it is a history of one month and uh, it will very rapidly. And uh, the first uh, image is with photo finder and the second is with the hand dermatoscope. That's why uh, there is a bit difference with the color. Uh, from my point of view, uh, I see some radial lines Yes, and yes. numerous black dots black and dots, dots. Black dots. Yeah. So spitz, and, uh, spitz uh, type. <laughs> yeah, spitz type. And the rapid growth and the young age also support uh, the diagnosis of read or spitz nevus here. Uh, but uh, I would like to excise it because it appeared after puberty and grew very rapidly. 
Uh, so I don't want to skip melanoma. And here is the comments uh, of the members from the dermatoscopy uh -huh. side. <laughs> most commonly, <laughs> they thought that uh, it's a reed or spitz nevus, uh, just like you, and there are some... <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is very yeah. nice. Yeah. Bad spitzoid is, melanoma versus. I can give the name. Uh, this uh, image uh, is from Pavel, uh, from Poland. It was so <laughs> nice. It, yeah. But it's showing Nisa, it's showing the schizophrenic nature of this kind of spitzoid looking lesions. Eh? Yeah. Two yeah. sides of the medal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, here, here is the histopathology. Oh, nice. And uh, histopathologically, uh, it was a very challenging lesion uh, for my pathologist, and she couldn't decide whether it's a, a reed nevus, atypical reed nevus, or a melanoma. And then uh, we uh, got opinions from Australia and Austria, uh, and the Australia team thought that five pathologists uh, examined the lesion, and they all agreed that this is a melanoma. And from Austria, uh, we got opinion from Harold, and he said that he couldn't decide uh, uh, whether it's a reed nevus or a melanoma, and uh, he advised us uh, to excise it uh, as if it's a melanoma. And we did it. Uh, we excised it uh, with uh, one mil uh, centimeter margins uh, and distal uh -huh. phalanx amputation, of course, because there was some uh, involvement uh, in the eccrine glands. Uh, now he is did, fine. Did, uh, sorry, did, I didn't understand. You did amputation? Yeah, uh, because uh, the uh, involving the eccrine glands also. Mm. Wow. It was micro Hard decision. Uh, the breast of thickness was, yeah, yeah. And hard decision. That, because the point is that. Um, uh, yeah, it's a hard decision. Maybe. Uh, Maybe because, of course, for, for Australians, uh, it's, this is not uh, a, a, an everyday case, but maybe for Asian pathologists, uh, you know, this could be also this kind, because there are a lot of cells in the epidermis. It could, it could, be, it could be also this kind of maniac um, uh, type of, of nevi yeah. called maniac. Uh, anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, maniac yeah. mean, me, uh, melanocytic uh, uh, um, uh, nevi with uh, uh, intraepidermal um, location of, of cells. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, it's a really challenging and unique yeah. case, so it would be challenging for everybody because spitzoid lesions on these anatomic sites are so rare. So uh, nobody can have a big experience on them for sure because they are extremely rare. I also have one uh, in the cases that I I, uh, I didn't show. I do have an, a nacral spitz nevus, uh, thank thankfully. But uh, no, it's a great case, Nisa. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You. It's a great case. Okay, and uh, the second case it's a bit challenging again. Uh, and this time the patient is a 78 year old female and uh, the lesion appeared six months ago. And it was an asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic flat lesion. And on the, as you see here, and one here and one here, side by side. And here are the dermatoscopy. What do you think with this one? And what do you think with this one? Definitely an asymmetric crazy lesion. The age of the patient is also important in this case. Um, I mean, we have to think about melanoma, no question. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't. Indeed, uh, uh, hi, Constantinos. Constantinos is also with us. Of course. Welcome, welcome, Constantinos. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, Nisa, dotted vessels on 11 o'clock. Uh, also, very eccentric pigmentation. I would go for melanoma. However, I would keep pigmented balance in the sideline, you know, yes. crazy diagnosis. This is a yeah, good yeah. alternative. Yeah. There is also in the chat a comment about by Bowen by, by Zoe. Really? As an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Azoe, of course. 
<laughs> you were great then, Constantinos, because uh, it's a pigmented bovine's disease, and it was a really very uh, surprise for me because there was no scale around and just uh, pink and white structureless areas and gray structureless areas. It's a chaotic lesion with uh, lots of dotted vessels. And I thought that this could be an intrinsic metastasis, although there is a parallel furrow pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, and we excise uh, both of them, this one and this one. This one came as a nevus, and this one was all uh, bovine's disease. And acral bovine's disease can be seen. And it's a real, real challenge. Uh, really, it, it confused with melanoma, acral melanoma. Uh, so I want to share with this case with you. Uh, this That's the similarity with uh, melanoma. Beautiful case, melanoma. Thank you so much for sharing. And I mean, come on. If we see this lesion, we're all going to excise. <laughs> First diagnosis is rule out melanoma. But yeah. Concerning the question, there was a question before about biopsy. This is an example in which yeah. a partial biopsy, a punch biopsy is a good yes. idea when, when yes. the differential is melanoma and something else. Yes. By the way, Nisa, I, I, I wouldn't be so happy with the histological diagnosis of nevus for the other lesion, but any, anyhow, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, quite ugly in the age of 80 yeah. uh, to be a nevus, but okay. Uh, so maybe maybe you can challenge a bit the pathologist about it. I don't know. No, but the pathologist said uh, Bowens, right? No, no. The small one was a nevus. Ah, yeah, the, the small one, one was a nevus. The small one was ah. a nevus, and this one was a, a Bowens disease. Yeah. Well, it's too much coincidence. I don't trust yeah. coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> but any, uh, anyway, we excise all Bowen. of them. Uh, there, there is no lesion here. A focus, so. a focus of Bowen as well. Yeah. They are all done. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, thank you, Nisa, so much. Thank you. Uh, another question in the chat is uh, acral melanoma is 30% raised on a nevus and 70% de novo like other melanomas? No. Acral melanoma is much more frequently de novo. More than 90% of acral melanomas are de novo and less than 10% are yeah. Uh, associated with a pre-existing nevus, okay. maybe much less than 10% in less. some, in some uh, series at least. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another question is, nevi with involvement of, of the crests, can the presence of free glandular outlets be a sign of benignity? I'm not sure I fully understand, Francesca, what no. you mean. So um, meaning that uh, when the eccrine ducts are spared, by the proliferation, a uh, safe. Uh, so then, well, but melanoma in situ usually is sparing the, the duct. So before getting into the duct, it takes long. So yeah. it's not, uh, uh, so whenever we see a parallel ridge pattern, even in, if the ducts are visible, we have to think about yeah. Yeah. In contrast, some nevi do involve the eccrine glands, and especially congenital nevi. Uh, do involve the the eccrine gland openings. This is the so-called peas in a pot pattern. And also blue nevus. And also blue nevi. Exactly, exactly, Nisa. Thanks a lot. Very nice. Thank you, Nisa, so much. Wonderful cases. Wonderful cases. And uh, and the comments also of uh, of the people are were so nice. Uh, so uh, next thing. Uh, Sebastian. Yes. This is a good question. Why do you develop a pigmented bowen in a foot? Yes, <laughs> I would ask the same question. <laughs> Come on, a pigmented bowen on a foot. But but we, we also have a, had a case of a bowen, bowen's disease of the nail matrix of the foot. So it's not completely uh, crazy. You know, sometimes it can happen. Maybe the explanation is that bowen's disease is, is viral in its uh, origin. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Okay, eudermoscopy. Time for eudermoscopy. The floor goes to Konstantinos, that, who will present a case or two, I don't know, from, uh, from the app, from eudermoscopy app. Exactly. So, uh, I also selected uh, two cases from uh, eudermoscopy. Uh, so this is the first one, uh, also acral lesions, as Nisa did. First case, 12-year uh, male, female, sorry, 
uh, that was uploaded yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes from Brazil, and I think this has its importance. Mm -hmm. hey, this, nice. This is the clinical. <coughs> and this oh! is the hey! Oh, que bello. <laughs> tunga, tunga. Tunga, tunga. Penetrance. Penetrance. I, I absolutely agree. agree. This looks like tungiasis. And the vast majority of answers. We have 44 answers in one day, which is amazing, wow. right? Wonderful. People are active. People are getting back into it. And other benign proliferation was the majority of the answers, which I love very much. And another case from... Uh, yeah, also wow, nice. this is also <laughs> nice. Look at this. Hey, this is Tinea. <laughs> so, clinical and dermoscopy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tinea nigra. nigra. Tinea Nigra. Beautiful. I, Thank you, Constantinos, for showing these very nice examples of two uh, entities with a very specific yes. dermatoscopic appearance. Great, great. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Bravo. Well, Bravo, not me. excellent. Not excellent. Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, uh, you had to search a little bit, so yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's it's unacceptable that we are speaking about acral lesions and we did not show not even one poroma. Come on, ah. <laughs> poroma <laughs> is your is your second favorite tumor, right? Yes, yeah. I am accusing myself. In fact, not not you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we have to remember that uh, acrine poroma. It, the, the most frequent location is just the acral, so the foot. So um, uh, we have to think about it. Exactly. That's why I'm saying so. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. One more question is yeah, whether fish examination would be of help with the spitzoid lesion. Well, fish examination will definitely be of help to confirm the spitzoid nature of the lesion, for sure. But for the differential diagnosis between spitzoid melanoma and spitz nevus, it's not clear if the if the fish would give uh, would give the answer. Complete uh, hybridization would be an option. Yes. However, it's not still widely spread and still has some gray zones. But it's better than fish for sure. Fish will definitely uh, confirm the spitzoid nature of the lesion. Differentiating between them is mainly it all comes back to H and A in essence and the experience of the pathologist until now. CGH has a lot of potential, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. And P16 is also a bit helpful maybe, because it's generally positive in spitzoid lesions and negative in melanoma. Yeah. P16. P16, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it was negative with, in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When do we have the Poroma session? Yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, let's have a Poroma session, right? Poroma session. right. No, let's have an adnex adnexal episode. Eh? No, no, Poroma deserves, deserves <laughs> an episode on <laughs> <in the laughs> Poroma. <laughs> Actually, Mike Marchetti has an amazing paper on uh, Poromas. Yes, yes, we will invite Mike for this uh -huh. uh, episode, definitely, definitely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So let's uh, let's see a few uh, cases from the participants. We do have some yeah. more minutes, yes. but let's see the, a few cases from the participants, yes. and then if we have yes. time, we will. Uh, yeah. I will also show uh, some cases. So uh, when we say cases from the participants, always we begin with who? With who? With who? Penelope. Penelope. Penelope, the one and only. Penelope, the artist. Penelope, the science. The scientist. <laughs> so, uh, Penelope's gift for this Sunday is related ah, as, uh, she, as she yeah. does in the last weeks. She yeah. sends a panel related to the previous, yes. to, to the topic of the previous episode, which was uh, new causal lesions. So, uh, are we ready to try? Yes. To yes. Okay. Go. One. Zoom. No. Zoom balanitis. Yeah. Okay. Good. Two. Two uh, is uh, fibroma. Very, stra very strange BCC in that area, but still, I suppose we are in the skin, so it could be a BCC. I heard BCC and fibroma. Okay, uh, three. 
Fibroma. Uh, Fibroma. Fibroma, yeah. Fibroma, yeah. What, what? Fibroma. 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 Fibroma four. Traumatic, traumatic fibroma because it's uh, on the yeah, tip yeah, of the tongue. Yeah. So four, four is a word. Four. four. Five. Five. Five is easy. easy. Angioteroma. Yes. Angioma. Okay. Yes. Six. And tinea, uh, not tinea. <laughs> Ling <laughs> Ling lingua nigra. Lingua nigra. <laughs> lingua nigra. Very lingua good. Nigra. This I week you it. did you did very well. I have to say. Usually you catch one of six or two of six. Yeah. This week. <laughs> This week, uh, yeah, yeah, very, very well done. So look, these wonderful cases by Penelope. We open the envelope and yes, Zoom Balanite is case number one with orange color and linear vessels. Uh, pigmented BCC was the second case. Uh, the apnesia, uh, which is, uh, I don't know what is the apnesia. What's, what's that? What's that? I also am not sure what the apnepsia is. Traumatic fibroma, I think. But it's. probably it's, it's uh, yeah, it's something yeah. like the fibrous, uh, I guess, uh, something like the fibrous, uh, a fibrous reaction. Yeah. 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 Uh, genital warts, of course, hemangioma, of course, and black, hairy tongue. Tongue. Very yeah. Nice. Very nice. So send us your case, Thermoscopy Happy Hour uh, at Gmail period com uh, let's see just a couple of cases from uh, that you sent one the first one from verce uh, she sent two cases one genital one lips the genital lesion is 20 years old girl appeared one year ago and slowly enlarging uh, and in the last two months became nodular uh, her sister had an atypical speech humor uh, uh, the second is lips 66 years old pigmentation appeared six years ago and slow pro slowly progressing this is the first case which to me looks like a nevus. I don't know. Oh, you think so? I don't think so. Well, it's more on the side of a melanosis because of this ring pattern. If uh, if you if you come closer, probably yeah. it's more easy to understand to see the ring pattern. Yeah, it could be. But anyway. since also the lesion is a little bit pal palpable or even even slightly nodular, it could be a dermal nevus. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, a dermal nevus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, and the, but but I would be worried about the second, which is yes. this one. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm. This is a too large lesion, too large. Gray not color. Clear -cut colors, colors. Yes, not clear cut linear uh, pa parallel lines. So and gray color, which we don't like on mucosal surfaces. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We like gray color on the nails, but we don't like gray color on mucosal surfaces. Yes, but. Yeah. Very good. Then, uh, Nisa, spell it out. Uh, re Chida. Read the name. Chida. 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 Okay. Chida. Very good. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much for the amazing happy hour episodes. I wanted to share these three cases of subcorneal hematomas uh, with different colors and patterns. The first is 15 years old, the second is 40 years old, and the third is 23 uh, years old. Uh, uh, homogeneous pattern the first homogeneous red the second parallel far of the third uh, this is the first one yeah typical Green. hematoma great the second very good yeah yeah nice but how can it be possible they don't recall the day the, the, the trauma you know what I mean so why you go to the doctor to, to let the doctor say that you got a trauma <laughs> 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 that, that's so often it's like did you hear yourself there yes I did doctor you think it's from that <laughs> <laughs> and the third case I would say this is a parallel reach pattern maybe yes, yes. which uh, is uh, frequently the case in, uh, in uh, subcorneal hemorrhages and the follow up in case 3 of course the hemorrhage disappears and finally Gary our friend Gary uh, is sending a case uh, 70 years old, six months history of a growing nodule. You know the answer. I thought it was a great case to share with the audience. And I fully agree that this is a great case of clear. clear Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. 
So, uh, what should we do? We have 10 minutes. Should we go directly to our Kahoot game or should... Uh... Show, show you a couple of cases you... Yes, Konstantinos. Before, before you go there, just uh, one thing, one observation, what we said before, on, there is no clear evidence on trauma and developing a melanoma. Indeed, there is no clear evidence. However, there was a beautiful paper, I recall, from New England Journal of Medicine. I just found it. Um, let me pull it up. That actually showed. Uh, let me show screen. So, of course, it doesn't uh, show that trauma causes a melanoma or nacal lesions. However, um, the group from Costello et al studied 120 melanomas and showed that the vast majority of melanomas occurred on pressure areas. Yeah. This is something interesting to keep in mind. It doesn't say a lot. It doesn't make the, the, the concurrence with trauma. However, on pressure areas, melanoma is a little bit more often. Just as an observation to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Konstantinos, for this. And uh, so let me share my screen to show you uh, very quickly a few uh, cases. So this is the first one. And this is, uh, what do you think? Nevis. Congenital. And this is the, the, the piece in a pod, eh? yeah. the yeah. involvement of the uh, eccrine duct openings. Okay, but look now a very similar location uh, of a uh, pigmented uh, lesion with peas yes. again, but the peas here are not in a pod. <laughs> exactly. They are crazy pieces. <laughs> yes. but you know what? You know what? There is a, a morphologic variant of melanoma with dots and globules, and this is especially seen on the palms. Not more, not too much on the soles, because also yeah. I had a couple of cases like this. Yeah. Very nice, this one. Eh? Nice, yeah. image. nice yeah. image. Nice image. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Huh? Yes. Is it yours? Beautiful. Yeah. Mine, not mine, mine uh, in the sense of uh, the photograph. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's your patient. Okay, then very quickly, a few examples, a nice example of a very early uh, parallel uh, ridge. Parallel ridge. Parallel Which ridge is parallel. still does not mean that this is a melanoma. We have to excise this lesion, but I mean, at least it happened to me in the past that a few... Uh, Neva, I can show this kind of pattern. Was it histopathologically what? Yes, yes. This one, early melanoma. Early mm -hmm. melanoma. Okay. Yeah. In situ, of course. Yeah. Okay. Then a, a typical example that I skip or with a parallel furrow pattern of the nevus. This is what I wanted to show you. This is underreported in the literature. We don't think it describe it in yes. papers and we should because this is frequent. Acral... Mm -hmm. Dermal nevi, yes, yes. Uh, which dermatoscopically display this pattern, uh, which is a little bit does not conform with the names that we have for the other patterns. In fact, I have to reveal that we did uh, a study recently and we submitted it and we used the, the term wavy lines uh, pattern for, for, for this to describe these brown lines. Like Anyhow, uh, the point is that it's frequent, okay, very frequent. We should not be, of course, afraid when we see it. Yeah. Uh, we, have to mention, we have to mention that, uh, mm -hmm. of course, this is a, a dermal uh, uh, congenital-like mm -hmm. nevus. <laughs> yes. And uh, the fact that we are not used to it, it's because the great majority of, of, ne of, of nevi on acal site are going to disappear, including a good proportion of congenital nevi. But sometimes they instead remain and they become dermal. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, in our population in the, in the cohort of the study, this was not rare. I mean, a percentage of like 15% or almost 20% of nevi were like, like this. So it's it exists quite frequently. Konstantinos, you were saying something. No, I was saying that I'm laughing because I saw Zoe's uh, comment. <laughs> it's like mitochondria-like pattern for Harold Kittler. <laughs> uh, yeah, mitochondria. <laughs> mitochondria, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we can use both terms, definitely. definitely. And Harold is going to love, to love the metaphoric terminology. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and this is uh, a patient with two nevi, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left is uh, rather a parallel furrow pattern uh, mainly, so it's it's a frequent uh, presentation. But the one on the right is very strange. Read, very, read or? Fibrilla, a little bit fibrilla. Read. Fibrilla, fibrilla. Yeah, well, uh, it's... This is this was excised and diagnosed as <coughs> acral speed nevus. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, you see the, the, the projections here, uh, the linear projections at the periphery. So it's uh, a rare and unique. I mean, I, I don't have any other uh, mm -hmm. personal I, example of acral speed nevus. Uh, I have around eight or ten. Really, it's acral speed in Turkey. Yeah, uh, acral wow. and speeds. Interesting, yeah. a lot. Great. You have to publish them if you didn't, because yeah. I think Maybe that, we can collect them. <laughs> I think that in the literature there is zero published concerning the yeah. Spitz Nivai. Yeah. Very good. And uh, of course, an exception to all the rules is congenital nevus. Acral congenital nevi in children might be very ugly, might fulfill all the melanoma criteria, a symmetry of colors, a symmetry of structures, even parallel reach pattern. Uh, this is the same case with nail uh, nevi in children. So uh, in childhood, all the rules we discuss about do not apply. And in fact, in childhood, we don't worry easily yeah. about, uh, uh, about um, uh, uh, acral or nail lesions. And the last thing that... I, ah, by the way, no, let me show you this amazing case of Harold Rabinovitz. Uh, he sent it to me. Of uh, look at the, look at this melanoma. I mean, it's uh, it's yeah. obviously a melanoma, a, a, a very slow growing acral lentiginous melanoma with a clear cut, with yeah. a clear cut parallel furrow pattern uh, all over the lesion. So uh, this underlines what we Jeppy said before. We should take into account not only the question furrows or ridges, but also the overall symmetry of the lesion. Uh, and uh, that's very, very important. The last point that I would like to stress is the following. Usually, not usually, always when we speak about acral melanoma, we practically refer to acral lentiginous melanoma, okay? Yeah. Acral lentiginous, which is a slow growing tumor, which displays the parallel reach pattern and grows, I mean, peripherally for a long period before it invades the dermis. But this is not the only type of acral melanoma. There is also the other phase, which this is an example of an acral melanoma, which is completely different morphologically. It's hypopigmented. There is just a small focus of pigmentation with irregular brown glob uh, black and brown globules. Mainly, this is amelanotic with ulceration and hyperkeratosis. These are the melanomas that are misdiagnosed as ulcers, as warts, as uh, I don't know what else. And these melanomas are much more aggressive biologically as compared to the classic acral lentiginous melanoma. So this is something that we should keep in mind. Acral melanoma uh, consists of two practically different subtypes, the classic acral lentiginous that we know pretty well how to recognize, but also the acral non-lentiginous melanoma, which is hypopigmented often or non-pigmented uh, often, and it's very fast uh, growing. So that's a very important point that, again, maybe it's underreported until now, and we should highlight it uh, even more. Emilius, I think this is the equivalent of like nodular melanoma on the, feet, on the foot. It grows yeah. rapidly, it's underdiagnosed, and it kills. So it's, it's not nodular. That's the point, you know. Yes. Because uh, usually it's not nodular because of the pressure, because of the anatomic location. So nodular melanoma is not nodular on acral site. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. I think that we covered the the topic of acral uh, yes. acral uh, molds very very well. I mean, we said almost everything with a nice. Uh, cases also go Nisa and Constantino showed. And uh, so uh, I don't know if we have any other questions or uh, uh, any 
comments? Uh, no, well, so. basically not. Uh, and uh, we can go to the Kahoot. Uh, I mean, of course, we, we will go yeah. to the Kahoot. We should go. Yes, 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 yes. I will do it immediately. Uh, do you want in the meanwhile, JP, to say which is the prize for the Kahoot? Yes, of course, of course. Also today, as the, it was for the last two episodes, the winner of the Kahoot game will win uh, this. Sebi, are you, are you launching the video? <laughs> if not, it's okay. So we, uh, Emilio and I, were... Hello, Emilio. Hello, JP. Welcome to the Dermoscopy Excellence Digital Training. Let's start from the clinical. Are you ready for the scalp? Some data highlighting a significantly worse survival for acral melanoma. Here, again, you make the diagnosis because of the arborizing vessels, sharply in focus. So this is our destiny, my friends. If someone is connecting right now, Yes. Then they are saying, okay, let's stop seeing this stupid <laughs> course. <laughs> but then if you look at the tables and you see, you see the reason why. And I know on the face is a lazy guy. Morphologically, dermatoscopically. <laughs> Bravo, my president. Eh? <laughs> so, digital training, a full course um, of 10 modules and you will enjoy it. Yeah. So it's nice to know what we play for. Uh, there we go. You can see it on the screen, I guess. The pin. Yes, yes, yes. The pin is nine six four one six one. Great. Mary is the first connecting. Hey, Koshikwa. They are slowly coming. They will arrive. They will arrive. Yes, 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 yes. Have to run sixty-five participants. Yeah, 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 yeah. 165, yeah. This is uh, in the Zoom because you know that there are many people also attending in the, there is also the YouTube, YouTube. streaming, the yeah. YouTube streaming yeah. live. Yeah. Uh, no, no, this is wonderful. And uh, no, especially today that I checked all these countries, all the all the, the messages that people from, from several countries send us, it's really, I mean, wonderful because it's a worldwide uh, company. Well, it's amazing what you guys have done. It's like you, you've turned Sunday afternoons into a dermoscopy, you know, get together, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the participation increased from the moment that you and me appeared. And then we were just, <laughs> yeah. we were just here with 10 <laughs> friends. <laughs> I sincerely doubt that. I sincerely doubt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you will see, uh, in a few years, uh, I will have a completely white beard and uh, Emilio will have heirs. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we will be still here chatting and having fun with uh, the Moscow PNP Hour. Here we are. More, more than 100 connected already. Uh, look, at, I don't know why this happens with Kahoot. I mean, at the beginning, they go, it goes slowly yeah. and then... Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Could be... Yeah. yeah, but we have many more people uh, joining the Kahoot session, right? Yeah, yeah, many more people. Yeah, many yeah. more people. Okay, should we wait maybe... Uh, no, they're, yeah, still, one they're still joining. Yeah, yeah, still joining a lot. Uh, well, maybe now it's it's time because it's around one one fifty, one sixty. No, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, let's go. Okay. okay, let's go. Let's start. Five cases from the previous week, Monday to Friday. Look what happened in the previous week in our clinic. Monday. This was my favorite case from Monday. Okay, uh -huh. okay. clinically. Dermatoscopically. Oh, beautiful. And let's see now the options. Spitz nevus, recurrent nevus, basal cell carcinoma, seborrheic keratosis. Very nice, very nice. Or Poroma, Poroma could be also. <laughs> <laughs> poroma, yeah, yeah, you're right. I have to include Poroma much more frequently in my choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're correct. Yeah. 
Very good. Okay, 63, majority. Spitzoid seborrheic uh, keratosis. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Chichi. Chichi, Chichi is leading, Chichi. Is leading the scoreboard Chichi. for the moment. And let's go now to Tuesday. Look how lovely this case is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I wanted to show it. I wanted to show it. Ah, Come che bello. Come I wanted to show it. Che yeah. bello. It's really nice, really wonderful. But is it a callus? Is it an hematoma? Is it a basal cell carcinoma or a viral wart? Okay, this is a bonus case, I would say. Come yeah? on, this is this must be a poroma. This, this, you don't yeah. have poroma included. Here I should include poroma. You are so, so, so <laughs> correct. So correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Very good. Of course, this is a viral word. This is the the best example I can ever imagine of, of a viral uh, word with uh, dermoscopy. Emory. And uh, Chichi remains uh, on the top of the scoreboard. And this brings us to Wednesday. This is the Wednesday case. Okay, uh -huh. clinically, dermatoscopically. Ah, this is interesting. Interesting, eh? I also think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are the options. So is it a basal cell carcinoma? Is it a Bowen's disease? Is it a lichen planus like keratosis? Or, 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 or my friend, my friend, <laughs> our friend Poroma. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, beautiful. Very nice beautiful. case, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, it's but the nice. The reasonable uh, option uh, was the correct one. Bowel disease, very nice. Good, Chichi. Uh -huh. But okay, let's not speak. But if if this continues, it will be the first time that somebody began uh, from the case one. one and remain, until remain, the end. Until no, the end. but don't say it. Don't say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't jinx it. Okay, Thursday. Very hairy uh, surface, okay. but there is something under, below underneath the hairs. This is what we can see underneath the hairs. Okay. And here the options. It's one of these lesions, if it's looking like this, it must be like this. <laughs> Lunivus, angioma, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma. <clears throat> Let's see what the answer is going to be. How long do you have this lesion? That's the question. Who cares? Who cares? Who blue cares? Divus. Now you can say it. A lesion? Yes. A blue nevus, uh, a lesion oh. looking, looking as a blue nevus is a blue nevus. Exactly. It is Socrates. <laughs> it's Socratic. <laughs> Socratic, exactly. Chichi remains on the top, and this brings us to Friday. Where is the lesion? Ah, okay, there. Ah, yeah. okay. The lesion yeah. is right there. A hairy scalp. And this is dermoscopy. Yes. And these are the options. Blue nevus, angioma, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's difficult, you think? No, I don't. But no, let's see. No, no, I don't think so. Well, only very because, good. Yeah. So you yeah. showed another case before, so that's why. It's a sclerosing blue yeah. So let's I, say, I think it's the same with sclerosing. Yeah. Let's say once again that the lesion looking like a blue nevus is, is a blue nevus. It's a blue nevus. Yeah. 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 Very good. Excellent. Exceptional. So very good. Number three. Seed. Seed. Uh, seed, uh, seed is in number seed. three. <coughs> Verche in number two. And Chichi. Chichi. Wonderful. Come on. This was an achievement. Yes. Come on. Uh, from, from the beginning. Case, from the beginning to the end. Yes. Very predominant, you know, a performance. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. Excellent. Beautiful. We want to see Chichi again. Because of course we do. Uh, Chichi wins uh, the yeah. free uh, ticket for the digital uh, version of the Demoscopy Excellence. Uh, so Chichi, if you are uh, available, please join. Sebastiano, please, uh, please make uh, all the arrangements. 
In the meanwhile, uh, what else do we have to say? Uh, YouTube channel, you can see this episode and all the previous episodes. Uh, next Sunday, we will be here together with Niza, together with Konstantinos in a Kitchen topic. Is Kitsche. Eh? Kitsche is Chida. Who? What? Chida. Chida. Ah, 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 Really? Guarda, vedi, Cici. Brava, Cici. But you were a winner again. Yeah, I was a winner again. It's thanks to your Dermoscopy Excellence digital training that I'm better now. And so you you can give it to the second one, I think. <laughs> ah, really? Of course, of course. I had a prize. I had the first prize, actually. Yes, yes, yes. So then... Then, so then, let me share the screen Perfect. again in order to show that oh, the number so two was yeah, Verce. Verce, Verce. Yeah. So Verce wins uh, Verce <laughs> the prize. Very, Thank very you good. again. Uh, you really help us a lot, young, uh, young dermatologists, to feel more yeah. confident about dermoscopy. Very nice, very nice. Congratulations, Sida. Congratulations. Thank you. Bravo, bravo. 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 Bene, bravo to Verce who uh, won uh, the, the digital training um, um, uh, registration. Very good. Va bene, oh. ragazzi, what about the next uh, episode? We will uh, tell you uh, in the following week which will be the, the topic. Yeah. Um, and, ragazzi... Un bacione. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care. Bye Enjoy. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.